It isn't uncommon for tag teams in pro wrestling to get thrown together just to see what happens or just because there's no further plans for certain guys in terms of singles competition. Sometimes the results are good, sometimes the results aren't so good, and sometimes the idea itself of putting two particular superstars together really isn't all that bad, but the end result is a little underwhelming. This, I feel, is where the allied powers sit when we talk about WWF tag teams. I recently watched Lex Luger's a &E biography documentary, and this tag team was completely left out of the show, which is understandable too, by the way. It's not like the team of Luger and Davy Boy Smith set the world on fire, and there's likely a large number of fans who are unaware that they even teamed up. But what I want to do in today's video is take a look at their whole run and see if we can dig up any good matches. So let's get started as we take a look at the allied powers, Lex Luger and Davy Boy Smith. The story of Luger's push in the WWF is one we all know, and it's one that's been covered quite a lot, so I don't want to waste too much time on the subject. But we also need to understand why Luger was moved into the tag team division. The WWF higher ups wanted to make Luger the guy in the WWF, the next all American hero that would replace Hulk Hogan, and things didn't quite work out the way McMahon and company had hoped. A mix of average performances and a bad attitude would lead to certain people doubting that Lex was truly champion material, and in the end, the WWF title went back to Bret Hart. Watching as a fan, you can tell that a lot of time and a lot of effort went into Luger's push, particularly in mid to late 1993 and early 94, so you can probably guess that there would have been some disappointment from both Lex and the World Wrestling Federation as a whole. Luger's singles run would continue with a feud against Ted DiBiase's Million Dollar Corporation. He would wrestle Tatanka at SummerSlam and get involved in a traditional Survivor Series match against DiBiase's faction at the 1994 Survivor Series pay-per-view. The Allied Powers tag team formed in the middle of this rivalry. Davy Boy Smith had left the WWF in November 1992, and by February 93 he was competing in WCW. Davy had a decent run in World Championship Wrestling with his matches against Big Van Vader at Slamboree 93 and Steve Regal at Halloween Havoc 93 being extremely underrated. But the Bulldogs' WCW tenure was cut short due to Davy having a physical altercation at a bar and getting into some legal trouble. Smith would return to the United Kingdom and work a few dates for Max Crabtree's RWS promotion, and he would then make his WWF return at SummerSlam 1994 to support brother-in-law Bret Hart during the Hitman Steel Cage match with Brother Owen. Davey would then begin having WWF matches again as a babyface, mainly feuding against Owen Hart and Jim Neidhart at first while getting backed up by the Hitman, but Davey would get help from an unlikely ally towards the end of 1994. On the December 18th, 1994 episode of Raw, Lex Luger wrestled IRS of the Million Dollar Corporation, and a druid stood on the outside during the entirety of the match. The druid tried to cause some problems for Luger, so Lex went to the outside, and it turns out it was Tatanka all along. Because Lex went after Tatanka, the total package got himself counted out, and the Million Dollar Corporation had no issues accepting this as a great victory for IRS. The next week, Davy Boy Smith was scheduled to take on Tatanka, and DiBiase made things difficult from the outside. The Million Dollar Man made Davy tumble out of the ring, and this leads to Lex Luger coming out to check on Davy. The referee ended up calling for a double DQ when Bam Bam Bigelow got involved, but Davy and Lex fought together here, and they were able to clear out the ring. The fans gave a good reaction too, and I'm sure a few light bulbs went off when Davy and Lex stood beside each other in the ring. The matching red, white, and blue colors, the big physiques the American hero, if you want to call Luger that, standing beside the UK's main man in terms of WWF wrestlers. You gotta admit, it is a tag team that kinda works, even if fans of this era were more accustomed to seeing Davy and Lex perform in singles matches. The very next week on Raw, the first episode of 1995, Davy and Lex had quite the evening, and this really could have been a make or break night for the future of the team, because Lex and Davy both opened up Raw, and they closed Raw. Let me explain. The opening match featured Luger and Smith vs Bam Bam Bigelow and Tatanka, a match that made sense considering what happened the week before, and again, the audience were extremely receptive to the Luger and Bulldog tag team. During this opening match, Luger started off strong, but some predictable underhanded tactics put the babyfaces in a bad spot. Lex needed to tag out, and when the Bulldog got that hot tag, Davey was able to take out Tatanka, and Davey performed his running power slam. That should have been the end of the match, but DiBiase pulled Tatanka out of the 
ring and a big old fight broke out on the outside. The referee couldn't restore order so the match was ruled as a double count out. In the Raw main event that evening, the match was restarted and the two teams went at it once again. Gorilla Monsoon said on commentary that there was too much unfinished business and there had to be a winner. The second match played out much like the first and we joined the match while Luger was taking a beating. But after a double clothesline, the hot tag gets made once again and Davy Boy cleans house before picking up the pinfall victory. The crowd loved it, DiBiase argued with Bam Bam and Tatanka on the outside while Luger and Davy celebrated what should have been a big night for this new tag team. Everything was in place really and all the WWF had to do was pull the trigger and start featuring Lex and Davey together on a frequent basis. You wanna know the next time they teamed up? The next time they had a televised match together? Three months later at WrestleMania 11. That's right, a whole three months later. And that really brings us to the main reason why this tag team is all but forgotten about. The World Wrestling Federation during this time period really did struggle with keeping things consistent. WWF TV was not what it would become even a year later, and there was a real struggle to keep things building or giving things time to settle, and this, I think, hurt the Luger and Bulldog tag team. We can't blame it all on TV time though, because while it was limited, there were still plenty of opportunities to feature the team. If not on Raw, then Superstars and Challenge were also viable options, but the WWF decided to keep Luger and Bulldog in singles matches while the two would help each other out if things went downhill. I don't know, you're probably thinking the tag team wouldn't have been all that great anyway had the WWF went all in and tried to make something of it. It's not like tag team wrestling was doing all that great during this time period anyway, but we'll never know because the opportunity to make Luger and Davey a formidable tag team, or at least feature the duo a bit more heavily, was never taken up to begin with. At WrestleMania 11, the team of Luger and Bulldog were officially named the Allied Powers and they opened up the show to take on Jacob and Eli Blue, maybe better known as the Harris Twins. Mania 11 gets criticised quite a lot for being a very underwhelming event and the show's opener is really no exception. Luger and Bulldog got another great response from the audience though and they were clearly put out there to warm up the crowd and start WrestleMania off on a high note, but there was no story at all going into the match and that means there was no hate, it was meaningless. The Mania 11 match also served as a reminder of how things had drastically changed for Luger in terms of his position on the WWF totem pole. The year before he was heavily involved in the title picture and here he is at WrestleMania 11 taking part in a match that really doesn't mean all that much on the grand scheme of things. I want to make it clear too that I like the idea of Luger and Davey as a team, especially if there was absolutely nothing for them to do in singles. Having these two huge superstars get together while waving their country's flags and whatnot may have been a little cheesy, but it could have been a lot worse. It's not a shot at Davey and Luger here, but a shot at how badly booked the team were and how the WWF put together two guys who were still very popular, yet they didn't seem to care all that much to do something substantial with them. The first Raw of 1995 and their WrestleMania 11 match really tells us all we need to know. They should have been pushed heading into Mania from January to April, but instead they were given a lot more tag matches after Mania. There's also the possibility that the two were never intended to be a team after the Bam Bam and Tatanka matches, but that doesn't explain why they were helping each other out every now and then when they got attacked in singles matches. Anyway, Luger and Davey defeated Jacob and Eli Blue at WrestleMania and this is probably the match that most people think of when they remember the team of Lex Luger and Davey Boy Smith, as disappointing as that may be. Later on in the same show, Owen Hart revealed his mystery partner for a match against tag team champions The Smoking Guns, and it was Yokozuna. Yokozuna and Owen defeated Billy and Bart Gunn to become the tag team champions, and seeing as Davey and Luger were now going to get featured more as a tag team, the new champions could expect to cross paths with the Allied Powers down the road. And so begins the Allied Powers three month undefeated streak. Only one team were able to defeat Luger and Bulldog on TV and we'll look at that match in a moment, but the Allied Powers went on to have matches on Raw, Superstars, Challenge and Action Zone and there wasn't a team who could beat them. Granted, many of these teams consisted of job guys, but it was 1995 after all and as mentioned earlier, the WWF tag team division during this time period was very shallow. The night after WrestleMania, Luger and Bulldog defeated Well Done in just under 4 minutes, and it was made clear on this night by Vince McMahon that the Allied Powers were coming after Yokozuna and Owen Hart. Their next televised match was just under 2 weeks later when they defeated the illustrious team of Bert Centino and Tony DeVito on an episode of Superstars. 
And then the allied powers defeated the heavenly bodies on Action Zone. And apologies for the video quality you're gonna see in some of these matches, the guys uploading to WWE Network have seemingly given up on putting out classic content. On the 29th of April 1995 episode of Superstars, Luger and Bulldog defeated the Black Phantom in the Brooklyn Brawler. And if you're wondering who the Black Phantom was, it was Gangrel. And then the Allied Pards returned to Raw and defeated uh, George Anderson and Ron Hagen. You can see the problem here, can't you? It was then confirmed that Luger and Davey would face the winners of the Owen and Yokozuna vs Smoking Guns match taking place at the first In Your House pay per view. The Allied Pards were left off the show completely, but that title match was going to take place at In Your House 2. Still though, there were quite a few weeks before that match would take place. The King of the Ring was scheduled before In Your House 2, and again, the Allied Pards were left off that show. Chad Miller and Todd Backer were the next legendary tag team to fall victim to Luger and Davey Boy Smith on the May 7th episode of Wrestling Challenge. Men on a Mission got themselves disqualified when facing the Allied Powers on the 14th of May episode of Action Zone, and Owen and Yokozuna then defeated the Smoking Guns at In Your House 1. So Luger and Smith vs Owen and Yoko is not expected to take place at In Your House 2. The Allied Pards quest to destroy every jobber known to man continued on the 22nd of May episode of Monday Night Raw when they went up against Bill Payne and Tony DeVito. Old Tony was good for a kick and it seemed. Fans continued to cheer and fans continued to show support for Lex and Davey as their road to the tag team titles continued and you know, watching this all back, it does feel a little disappointing that there weren't other teams or even some sort of decent storyline that these two can get involved in. The crowds Luger and Smith wrestled in front of were very receptive of the team, but it begins to feel like we're just going through the motions with every match feeling the same. We have more job matches next on Superstars and Challenge with guys like Mike Bell, Gus Cantaracus, Roy Raymond and Luis Morales all looking up at the lights after they wrestle the Allied Powers. And look, there's a recorded dark match right here where Lex and Bulldog defeated absolutely nobodies. This sums it up nicely, doesn't it? I know it's a dark match and not every local talent is gonna be known, but this is the first time I've seen a match on the Cage Match website where a tag team have been completely shrouded in mystery. A Raw match featuring the Allied Powers vs Henry Godwin and Tatanka of the Million Dollar Corporation got a little more build than what we were used to at this point, and by build I mean Lex and Davey cut a brief promo earlier in the evening. Lex says it isn't 2 on 1 like it was months ago when Tatanka was feuding with Luger, and Davey says the corporation won't stop the Allied Powers goal of becoming the tag team champions. The tag match took place in the Raw main event and it isn't anything special, but after watching all the job matches leading up to this point, it's actually kinda refreshing seeing something slightly more competitive, at least the heels were able to do a little damage here. It's another Raw main event win for the Allied Powers, and next up is the big match at In Your House 2. In Your House 2 takes place on the 23rd of July 1995 and the tag team title match is in the semi main event. This would turn out to be, in my opinion, the Allied Powers best match and it's another one that kinda goes under the radar. Again, there's no storyline going into this, Lex gets overpowered by Big Yoko to start things off and when Lex fights back, the big man falls on Owen's foot. This causes problems between the tag team champions and it looks like there's some dissension among the ranks but the tag champs get it together and Owen takes over. When Lex tags in Davey, the match quality goes up about 10 notches. Owen and Davey knew each other so so well and anytime they squared off against each other, it was always fantastic. This was no exception. Some cheating from the tag team champions allow Yoko to come in and slow things down. Davey finds himself in trouble and desperately needing to tag out, and the champions then begin quick tagging and leaving the challengers in a bad position. When Luger finally gets that hot tag though, it looks like Owen and Yoko are in real danger of losing their tag team titles. Lex throws Owen onto Yoko and the allied powers take out both their opponents with double clotheslines. Yoko then misses a corner charge and we see a double back suplex from Luger and Davey that makes the ring shake. This should have been the end of the match but the referee gets distracted and Owen's able to break up Luger's pin with a diving elbow drop. The air gets sucked out of the arena when Yoko hits Luger with a leg drop and the allied powers suffer their one and only televised defeat. You really would have thought that Luger and Davey were going to win this one with the big comeback at the end, but it wasn't meant to be. So it's back to the drawing board and back to defeating nobodies on B&C shows. 
Lex and Davey had two more televised WWF tag team matches together, taped on the 25th and 26th of July. The first was against the War Machines, two USWA guys in their one and only WWF match, and the second match was against AC Connor and Bob Cook. You may know AC Connor better as D'Lo Brown. Something must have happened backstage or someone got on someone else's nerves because the allied powers went on an incredible losing streak on the house show loop. It's remarkable because these guys were unbeatable since getting together and now they're losing night after night against Owen and Yoko, men on a mission. Even the Blue Twins were scoring victories over the allied powers with one of these victories happening in Madison Square Garden. Speaking of the Garden Show, Davey Boy grabbed the microphone before the match and he told fans to pipe down the USA chants. And when the crowd chanted USA even louder, Davey walked out on his partner, allowing the Blue Twins to score the victory. This would continue to happen in further house show matches, so it looked like the team was about to break up, with Davey becoming a heel. On the 21st of August 1995 episode of Raw, Men on a Mission challenged the Allied Powers to a match, and Davey revealed that Lex wasn't in attendance due to a medical emergency. Davey wanted to know if Diesel, the man scheduled to face Mabel at SummerSlam, would team up with him to fight Men on a Mission in the Raw main event. Diesel agreed, and Davey's heel turn happened when he attacked Big Daddy Cool from behind. The British Bulldog had aligned himself with Kem Cornette, and this would eventually lead to Davey teaming up with brother-in-law Owen. As for Lex, it's a bit strange. He was still in the WWF when Davey turned heel, but he did not have any televised matches. Diesel attacked him during the SummerSlam main event because Big Daddy Cool didn't know if Lex was on the same page as Davey, but we all found out that Luger was actually trying to help Diesel. And that was it really for Lex in the World Wrestling Federation. His last WWF match was a tag team match, Luger and Shawn Michaels vs Owen Hart and Yokozuna. Eight days later, Luger showed up in World Championship Wrestling, he didn't tell anyone in the World Wrestling Federation that he was leaving, and judging by the way things were going, joining WCW was the best thing Luger could have did. As mentioned though, it was a bit strange because Lex was inside arenas during TV tapings, but he was only having dark matches. He was not put on TV, even though he was there. And that's the Allied Powers tag team and their brief time together in the World Wrestling Federation. Really, it should have been more. We all know the Lex Luger experiment in the World Wrestling Federation was seen as a flop and Davey could be pretty inconsistent at times too, but when both these guys were on, they could really surprise us. Even though they were another one of those tag teams that were just thrown together, I thought they looked good as a team and as mentioned earlier, the idea really wasn't all that bad. But when it comes down to the actual matches they had in the ring, I can only recommend one, and it's a match they also lost, the In Your House 2 tag team title bout. It just wasn't a great time for tag teams at all. As a matter of fact, it wasn't a good time for the WWF at all. Both Davey and Lex would fare much better when their time as a team came to an end, with Davey getting pushed into pay-per-view main events and eventually forming a much more successful tag team with Owen Hart, and Lex becoming a key player during the early days of Monday Nitro and becoming incredibly popular as a babyface during the initial days of the NWO takeover. So it worked out in the end, I guess. So, to wrap it up, check out In Your House 2 for a decent Allied Powers match. The rest, you could probably skip it and you wouldn't miss all that much. And that's why it wasn't mentioned in the A&E documentary. Thanks for watching guys, and take care.